Hey guys, welcome back to Little Wars TV. This is our off-season question and answer. So uh, first of all, thank you to everybody who sent in questions. We got quite a few of them. I don't know how many of them we're gonna be able to get to in this session. We've got a couple pages and we'll do the best that we can. But I thought I would start off with not a softball question. This is, I think, a really good one. And Ivor from YouTube asks, should there be a rebranding of the HMGS moniker to include tabletop miniatures as a whole and not simply historicals in order to grow membership and conventions? That is a that is a hot topic. What do you guys think? Well, it, in a way, like they're if they do change it to allow that stuff in, they're just acknowledging something that already exists. There already is non-historical wargaming going it's on. It's actually about 25% of all the games there. Right. At every convention. Yeah. About one out of four games are fantasy or sci-fi. I didn't realize it was that high. It's but yeah, that high. It, it, then, then you're just basically acknowledging what already exists. Sure, I think it would be acknowledging that. I think it would be unfortunate to rebrand it, though, because right now what the HMGS conventions do offer, at least 75% or so of them, is something special, which is historical-focused miniatures games, which you you have things like Bolt Action, Flames of War at some of the other bigger conventions across the country, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I would not be in favor of that kind of rebranding. I think uh, what they're doing now is what they're focused on, and and I think that's appropriate. Well, there's a lot of, there's I think a lot of avenues for sci-fi and fantasy already. Right. right. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm not for rebranding it. Just keep it with this. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about HMGS, though, we do have an interview uh, that we did. I think you, you did the interview with uh, Scott Landis. Right. Uh, and this is a topic that comes up in that interview with Scott Absolutely. about the uh, preponderance of sci-fi and fantasy that you can see at some of the conventions. Question number two. Uh, this one is from Alan Smith on Facebook. And uh, he says, what influenced you to get into gaming in the first place? Uh, well, for me, it was uh, really the old Avalon Hill board war games. Uh, I really cut my teeth on those and uh, then kind of got away from the gaming hobby for a while. And when I came back, discovered, hey, Central Pennsylvania is like ground zero for miniatures, historical miniatures wargaming in the U.S. and kind of stumbled into it that way. For, well, for me, I'm maybe more typical of my generation that started with 40K. 40k? Yeah, I started 40K. with Warhammer, fantasy. Yeah, fantasy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's more typical of you know our age group. Um, I actually didn't get into historicals. I mean, I was into history growing up. Um, you can't live this close to Gettysburg and not be into history. Um, I was into it, uh, but I wasn't into historical wargaming mm -hmm. until I was out of high school, out of college, uh, until I met Chalfant. Sure. Um, and that's what started the club. That's what started the club, right. Uh, next question is from Stefan on YouTube, and this is a two-parter. He says, what is your favorite historical period to study? And then, what is your favorite period to game, if they are different? Hmm. It's a tough one. You got one for oh, yeah, Kick it to him. Yeah. <laughs> you do that. Uh, favorite <laughs> historical period to, to study, if you watch the Guadalcanal episode last mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. naval combat in the Pacific and World War II, uh, I will read virtually anything about that. It is also one of my favorite periods to game. Uh, another one would be, well, if you watch the Kawanakajima episode, uh, you know, obviously had a little a little influence on, on choosing those, so feudal Japanese warfare is another big a one A colorful for me. period. Yes, yes. And, and my third favorite uh, colonial period Period, particularly Anglo-Zulu War. Mm. What about you, Keith? Uh, for me, my favorite period to study is probably the French and Indian War. Mm. I did a lot of my PhD coursework on, and I was actually getting ready to do um, my dissertation, beginning of my dissertation on French and Indian War in Pennsylvania. But I don't actually find that gaming that, that interesting. Um, I mean, it's okay, I'll game it, but... Yeah, well, other than 40K, <laughs> yeah, other than 40K, 40K, what's your favorite yeah. historical uh, period to game? And I think for gaming, it's hands down World War II infantry, mm -hmm. uh, especially at the lower level. I just I need to hear gun I need to hear gunshots. I need to hear artillery. I need I need to be at the pointy end of the spear. I like platoon and company level. And you have yeah. a strange affinity for the French too. I do love <laughs> well, me some French. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm a tweet little at heart. Yeah. yeah. So you're always running. <laughs> yes. That's, that's I think for uh, for study, I would say American Civil War. But for gaming, um, I'll go Napoleonics, just because it's colorful, like. You know, yeah. Samurai, that era is colorful, and I think that the fact that we all gave different answers is one of the reasons that our club has been so successful, right. is that there are a ton of different interests in this club, and, and we're all happy to game any of them, That's true. pretty Absolutely. much at any time. Uh, so now i got a block of three questions that are all very similar, but they're actually sort of in the same vein of the most similar question that we got uh, in this Q&A. Mm -hmm. Jason asked, uh, 
I'm interested in how you establish and maintain the club. Are there officers? How are you funded? Yeah. Are there dues? Uh, how would you recommend I start a similar club or chapter in my area? Brandon uh, emailed us a very similar question, and Thomas from Germany said on YouTube, I live in Germany and find it impossible to find any groups that will play historical tabletop at all. How should I go about finding other people or groups? So, Well, th those are excellent questions, and, and I, I know I've seen a bunch of the, the questions that we've gotten along those lines, and that's why we've actually decided to do a whole separate video where we'll be giving you some tips on how to try and, and recreate what we've done here, or just create a club that you know is, you're happy with, with a with a bunch of people that you get to know. So look for that in the not too distant future. Uh, Nick on YouTube says, having learned the proper pronunciation of Glenfiddich, do you now pronounce it properly? I, me personally, is did it I not know how to? Did I, did <laughs> I pronounce second, it wrong? Is it Glenfiddich or I, Glenfiddich? I had, you know, I did say Glenfiddich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, answer, I probably still book The answer is we are not pronouncing it properly. <laughs> Glenn Fiddich. That's Glenn Fiddich. I didn't real. I guess I... Yeah, I guess I do now. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn Fiddich. Uh, Nick does have a follow-up question, and he says, If money and time were no object, what wargaming project would you do as your crowning achievement? It's a big one. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting for me because I think over the course of the last couple of years, I've, I've done two of the really big battles that I, I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, the third one, actually, I'm, I'm painting up the stuff for that right now, and, and you'll get to see it this season on Little Wars TV. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of getting to live my dream, so I, I don't know. Is there one that you, Keith, want to do but haven't really been able to? I actually have done a lot of the projects that I've really wanted to do. I think mine would be a huge Stalingrad table. And I've, I've talked about it for yeah. years, but you know, just tons yeah. of buildings on a six by eight or bigger board, maybe in like 15 millimeter or even six yeah, scale. Be, it's just, it's a terrain big. heavy project, so. Well, you know, I can print up ruined buildings now. <laughs> I hear you have a 3D printer or two. Uh, or, or two. <laughs> A uh, set of three questions, all related. Keith, we'll throw this one to you. Uh, itinerant Hobbyist on YouTube says, What's your advice for the best portable terrain? Please make more terrain tutorials. And Steve had emailed, not this Steve, another Steve. That might have been me. Uh, and said, uh, I would like to see a quick mention of options for miniature wargaming tables, knowing that many people do not have space for a dedicated 4x6. Mm -hmm. And Harley emailed uh, from New Zealand and said, uh, I have a question about terrain. I see some of your gaming mats appear to be over top of interlocking foam tiles. Is that just to create a soft surface, or is there some kind of clever terrain system going on there? Ah. Well, it's good, it's good you mentioned that because uh, we have a tutorial coming up about how we do our freestanding trees that don't need bases, uh, and that is a, a system of pins that you put in the bottom of the tree and you can put in the foam tiles. And I can't claim credit for that idea. Uh, I stole it blatantly off of a guy that does six millimeter stuff. Mm. Um, and he puts down a mat, foam tile underneath it, hills, and then puts trees uh, with pins. Um, so I have a tutorial on that, which will be coming up. Um, my whole reason for doing the system that we you kind of see in there, a lot of our videos is because uh, I would game in York, and I lived in Lancaster, and I would bring my own stuff. And so I had to get everything in the back of my Honda Element. And I had to be able to roll up a mat throw in some foam tiles, some hills, and put everything in boxes, and I had to be able to do that every week. Yeah, well, that's so, a problem I think a lot of people have, is yeah. not everybody just has room to set up a six by eight table in their house. Yeah, so. well, and I think, I think you know, choosing the scale that you're gonna game in is a huge role. If you don't have a lot of space, maybe you only have a three by three uh, table or right. a four by four table, well, maybe do, you know, six millimeter or 15 millimeter instead of big 28 millimeter games, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So I, I think you know you can set up a game virtually anywhere in virtually any space and and have a, a great game as long as you kind of plan ahead. Well, and the, and the tiles and the the mats are versatile because you can do a winter table. Right. Roll the mat out. You got a, a spring table. And yeah, we have all kinds of cloth down in the basement. Yeah. Different felt mats and things that you can use. Felt plush mat, plush right. felt. So we will definitely do more terrain tutorials. So we'll we'll have some more of those. Um, Getting close to the end of our time here, but I've got three good questions from Turan, and he emailed, and Steve, first one I'll give to you. Right. Are you guys planning to do any saga, bolt action, flames of war, or kings of war historical reviews? 
Uh, actually, we we would love to do a lot of reviews and perhaps even one of uh, or more of those particular rule sets because we do know that they're very popular. I know we've, we're looking at bolt action for uh, this upcoming season. Uh, but actually, all of those types of things, I think, if we had the time uh, and, and the editing power uh, to do that, we'd love to review as much as possible. Editing power? Yeah. <laughs> man power. Editing man, oh, okay. man power. Oh, that's true. Right, gotcha. that's true. My editing power is strong, but it can only do so much. Uh, but uh, yes, the, the, the quick answer is yes. I'll throw Trey on second question to you, and he says... Uh, does anyone branch off into sci-fi or fantasy wargaming at the club? <laughs> what are some of their favorite systems? And I will cast my dirty mode at you. I am presently banned from doing uh, sci-fi games at the club. I get lots of dirty looks and lots of uh, eye rolling when I do it. But actually for the past two years now, most of my miniatures gaming projects have been all sci-fi. Is it 40k? It's 40k. I don't play the 40k rules. Mm -hmm. uh, I play their their board game uh, Betrayal Calf, and I use it as a miniatures game. And but I, all my armies and projects have been sci-fi. Well, I know we rip on you a lot for that. But yeah. Steve has been known to sneak in a little yeah. fantasy game Abs here as well. Ab absolutely, uh, and you've been known you to participate in, in some what? of it. Nope, nope, uh, not me. I, I think I, I would a never. I would never. I remember we, a yes, we've, yeah. we've, we've done some uh, Middle Earth themed uh, <laughs> stuff on the table. I've run Car Wars, Gaslands. Uh, Chal and I actually not too long ago engaged in some old school battle tech. Mm. So I think you'll find most of us, even though we're, we're historical gamers first, except for Keith, uh, end, up, uh, <laughs> end up also dabbling in the fantasy and sci-fi because it's, it's kind of a throwback. Mm. Uh, you know, to, to what we did when we were younger or, you know, we sometimes have, it's just... Well, we have more fun. A couple of d d groups going on right now. Role playing. There's some role playing that goes some on too. Playing. We don't discriminate after, in this club. after hours. Yes, we do. I try to discriminate, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> yes, we do. All That's, gaming. You is do. I, here. I That's don't. not what we cover here in Little Wars TV because no. there's obviously plenty yeah. of channels out there yes, that talk yeah. about sci-fi and fantasy and, and the the niche that, that we look to fill the void that we hope to fill with this was historical war gaming. Turian's last question. <laughs> I, I had to include this one because before the question, he says in parentheses, controversial. Oh, so oh, wow. the question is, that's the preface, controversial. I've seen a lot of people online complain about your somewhat negative review of Chain of Command. Do you think that there was bias because a member of your club had created his own World War II rule set? And I think this is a totally legitimate question. It is a legitimate it is, question. It is. I didn't even grade it that low. Yeah, I got a 65. That's pretty good for a, a system. You yeah, I actually graded it I, worse than... I think I was the one who gave it the lowest grade, and it had nothing to do with Keith, because I really don't like Keith. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I just... And, and I know there are plenty of people out there who like Chain of Command, but it's mm -hmm. like art, right? You know, everybody's going to like things that other people don't and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I actually encouraged you to do right. the video review. Well, I remember asking you, should I do this? I know you did, but I, I thought that it was a good thing because you are an author of another rule set. You actually have some expertise in this. I mean, I'm a reader of the Wall Street Journal, and when you read book reviews in the yep. Wall Street Journal, the people writing those reviews are people who have written books on the same topic right. because they're bringing expertise to the table. Right. I personally, I mean, I gave it a, what, a 65? I didn't yeah. actually think it was that bad. As, you know, I don't think it's a bad system at all. I, I mean, scored it a little higher than you. Yeah. I think it's one of Two Fat Lardy's right. best systems. I don't know. It just seems to be that that caused some, ruffled some feathers. We'll keep doing our controversial <laughs> reviews. Uh, yeah. So, last question as we wrap this thing up. Uh, this is from Commander Barca on YouTube, and I think this is an appropriate question. I bet you've been asked like a million times, hasn't been quite a million, when will Little Wars Season 2 begin? Summer 2019. <laughs> Summer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be determined. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I... I we're kind of juggling a bunch of different things right now. Uh, some of what, one of which is a really big project you'll be getting information on fairly soon. Uh, but uh, absolutely, we, we target mid to late summer of this year for season two. And we're going to have some really, really great episodes. We have a few filmed already, right? We do. We have a couple of film filmed already, and we're working on filming more now. So it's, it's we just a lot need of work. more editing power. <laughs> Man power. Man power. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this uh, second uh, Q&A episode. We really appreciate you guys sending in the questions, and we'll see you next time.